Motley Crue is one of the biggest rock bands on the planet. With over 100 million albums sold worldwide, their iconic live performances have captivated millions of fans, making them a force to be reckoned with in the music industry. But despite their enormous popularity, there's a member who seems to stir up mixed feelings among rock fans. That member is Mick Mars, and his presence has become a subject of both fascination and debate within the rock community. So why is Mick Mars such a controversial figure? And what's the deal with the ugly legal clash between Mick Mars and his own bandmates in Motley crew? Let's find out. Mick Mars, originally known as Robert Allen Deal, was born in 1951 in Terre Haute, Indiana, and his family moved around a bit before settling in California. His love for music ignited at just three years old when he saw country singer Skeeter Bond perform. Inspired by Bond's flashy outfit and music, Mick knew he wanted to be a musician. His parents got him his first guitar at 12, and he became determined to succeed. Starting as a bassist in a Beatles cover band called the Jades, he later switched to lead guitar. Dropping out of high school, Mick played in various bands, but faced some challenges. In his early 20s, he worked at an industrial laundromat and played in local clubs. After recovering from a hand injury at work, he left his job to pursue music full-time. Joining a cover band called White Horse, Mick gained recognition for his guitar skills, but faced legal issues under aliases like Zorky Charlemagne. Despite White Horse's potential, Mick left when they shifted to playing disco. He then joined a pop group called Video Noir and released his first singles in 1978 and 1979. Frustrated with the California club scene, Mick decided to reinvent himself in 1980. He changed his name, appearance, and placed an ad in a newspaper seeking a band. Nicky Six and Tommy Lee, forming what would become Motley Crue, hired Mick after hearing him play. The band's name, suggested by Mick, became Motley Crue. They became one of the most influential heavy metal groups of the 1980s. Now, while Motley Crue gained fame for their wild lifestyle, Mick wasn't into illegal substances, but struggled with alcohol. During the recording of their album Dr. Feelgood in 1989, Mars used so many amplifiers that his guitar sounds were picked up on Aerosmith's recordings in the adjacent studio. When the band decided to bring back their original vocalist Vince Neil in 1997 for the album Generation Swine, Mick Mars found himself on the sidelines of the decision-making process. John Karabi, the vocalist they let go, shed light on the situation, mentioning that the band seemed to lack respect for Mick. In their eyes, Mick was seen as the quote-unquote grumpy old bastard. They gave him a hard time about his finances and personal life, making him feel like an outsider. This period, known as the Generation Swine era, became the source of regret for Mick, as much of his recorded work was replaced by session guitarists. The subsequent album, New Tattoo in 2000, also saw Mick's limited involvement, with him stating, quote, I didn't write any of those songs since I wasn't invited. I think I got one lick on that album. Nikki Six, on the other hand, mentioned Mick's struggle with addiction during that period. In the 2008 album Saints of Los Angeles, guitarist DJ Ashba recorded the majority of the guitar parts, although his contributions remained uncredited. Nikki Six explained that Mick was struggling to play his parts. If we talk about Mick's relationship with his Motley Crue bandmates, offstage it has been somewhat distant. Visits from bandmates like Nikki Six and Tommy Lee have been infrequent. Mick reflects on the dynamics, stating, quote, Six has only ever visited me two or three times at the most. Tommy came over once, and Vince just came over once, even though he lived just around the corner from me in Venice Beach. Mick's personality, a mix of being quiet and reserved, has set him apart from the other band members known for their partying and living the rock and roll lifestyle. Some rockers perceived him as standoffish and aloof, feeling he was too focused on his playing and less interested in connecting with fellow musicians and fans. His guitar playing, although undeniably talented and with a unique style developed since his teenage years, hasn't resonated with everyone. Critics argue that his solos are too long and self-indulgent, and he doesn't play well with others. Some feel he lacks the same level of energy and showmanship that other guitarists bring to their performances. On a personal taste level, music being subjective, Mick's guitar playing style has both supporters and detractors. Known for using a lot of distortion, his playing can create interesting sounds and textures, but some critics believe he relies on it too heavily. Others have criticized his playing for being too clinical or sterile, suggesting that he focuses too much on technique and precision. Also, Mick's distinctive 
attractive image with long, straight hair, a top hat, and sunglasses has always been part of his brand. While some fans appreciate his unique look, others find it gimmicky, feeling that he hasn't updated his appearance over the years compared to his bandmates. On October 26, 2022, Mick Mars dropped a bombshell. He announced he was retiring from touring with the band. The very next day, Motley Crue confirmed that John Five would be stepping into Mick's shoes, taking over his role in the band. But the plot thickened when, just a week later, the band dropped another bombshell, revealing that Mick Mars was fully retiring from the band. John Five was set to join the upcoming 2023 tour, which was a collaboration with Def Leppard. However, the story took a dramatic turn on April 6, 2023. In an unexpected twist, Mick Mars filed a lawsuit against the band, alleging that they were attempting to unilaterally remove him from the lineup. The band swiftly responded, stating that Mick wasn't fired, but also pointing out that he wasn't touring with them. Mick not one to stay silent, fired back with a bold statement. He claimed that the band had been trying to replace him since 1987, emphasizing his integral role as the guitar player who contributed significantly to the band's formation. According to Mick, Motley Crue wouldn't have gone anywhere without his name, ideas, and the financial backing he secured to kickstart the band. In an unexpected turn of events, Mick Mars signed a severance agreement, ending his future interests in Motley Crue in exchange for a five percent stake in the proceeds from the band's 2023 tour, a tour that was now happening without him. Amidst the legal drama, Mick Mars didn't let the chaos put a stop to his musical journey. In February of 2023, he embarked on a solo venture, commencing work on his solo album titled The Other Side of Mars. Produced by Corey Marks in Los Angeles, the album was teased as something weird, special, great, and loud by Marks. Mick revealed that the idea of a solo album had been brewing since 2014, and The Other Side of Mars was set to hit the music scene on February 23, 2024. Adding an extra layer of anticipation, the first single from the album, Loyal to the Lie, was unleashed on October 31, 2023. Interestingly, Mick Mars draws inspiration from blues rock music of the 1960s, listing Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix as major influences. He recognizes the impact of albums like Axis, Bold as Love, Truth, and Layla and other assorted love songs on his musical journey. Former Motley Crue vocalist John Karabi highlighted Mick's admiration for Leslie West and Jeff Beck, emphasizing the powerful and impactful sound that Mick appreciates. Beyond Motley Crue, Mick has contributed to various musical projects. He has co-written songs for John LeCompte, Crash Diet, and other bands. Additionally, Mick showcased his guitar skills by playing on tracks for Hinder and Papa Roach, among others. He even ventured into songwriting, co-writing a song with Escape the Fate. Mick also made a appearances in music videos, collaborating with artists like Pop Evil for Boss's Daughter. In November of 2019, McMars released a new song, The Way I'm Wired with Black Smoke Trigger. He continued to stay relevant in the music scene, featuring on the hit single Outlaws and Outsiders by Corey Marks. In conclusion, McMars's journey in the music industry is not just a story of a legendary guitarist from Motley Crue. It's a tale of resilience, determination, and an unyielding passion for music despite facing the challenge of a chronic health condition. His influence extends beyond the stage, leaving an indelible mark on the world of rock music. If you enjoyed this musical journey through Motley Crue's history, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more engaging content about music history.